There has been a lot of research done lately which state that people don't really trust AI anymore or don't trust it enough. I have two big resources I wanted to share with you today on that. Things which you need to keep in mind if you're working on anything emerging tech. Also, if your stakeholders are considering to add something with generative AI. It doesn't matter who you are again, a designer, researcher, or a product manager, or maybe an engineer as well, who's getting that shorter end of a stick to just implement something quickly. Now, the study from Washington State University is stating that using the term artificial intelligence in product descriptions reduces purchase intentions. And the researchers were actually engaged with more than a thousand adults to get some results of the actual attitudes towards AI products. When AI is mentioned, it tends to to lower emotional trust, which is in turn decreases purchase intentions. Emotional trust plays a critical role in how consumers perceive AI-powered products. And trust really here is that bedrock, and I like that they put so much weight on it, because it's what makes people engage with businesses, it's what makes people engage with people, or now as an actor like an AI product, let's say, or something along those lines. Because you build the trust, you build that permission to engage, and that's how you get people to opt in. And we build that trust in UX simply by giving more information, more tactful information, persuading them that this is a product which stands out from the other competing products and is really the right choice. That's how you build the trust. And obviously in the same vein, you can lose trust very easily if you overuse some things, maybe use too much argon, or in this case, you could maybe add a label on your toothbrush that it's powered with AI, and that's probably gonna be less trustworthy. Negative response to AI disclosure was even stronger for high-risk products and services, those which people commonly feel more uncertain or anxious about buying, such as expensive electronics, medical devices, or financial services. Because failure carries more potential risks, which may include monetary loss or danger to physical safety, mentioning AI for these type of descriptions may make consumers more wary and less likely to purchase. And of course, there is a lot of factors here, but one is being that AI is being pushed on a lot of existing services, which are already trusted with this additive nature, where, you know, we're saying, oh, but it can do something extra now. But people don't really care about extra. They need just their jobs and tasks done successfully and happily so, so they can maybe share with other people and spread virally that trust across the board and recommend different products and services to others. You know, just adding a feature which says, hey, we can generate you some text or some copy. And I'm oversimplifying this, obviously. It's not really taking a product which worked already a good enough way and people had set expectations of how it works. They could self-serve enough. They knew exactly how to use it. They didn't have to question of what does that mean and to what capacity maybe their data privacy or other aspects could be touched by this technology. So this is really a theme for anyone who works with emerging tech, but adding things to existing experience is not really a way. You really need to step back and consider the risk, the expectations, and consider how is this perceived. Now, people who do UX for a living are gonna be much more engaged. That's my prediction, by the way. Might not work out, maybe not to that extent, but because existing experiments are just not commercially viable, they're not feasible, we don't really, again, fulfill or are trusted by people out there, and we have enough data now, someone is gonna need to pick it up and rebuild it, and it's gonna be likely us. And so this next research piece is really about psychology and why it's so important for us. It's that people rate distinctively human attributes as more essential to being human after learning about artificial advances. Because a lot of those qualities which humans could have done to date now can be replicated by a single piece of technology, which is not really a persona, it's an actor, it's an animate. And as such, the humans perceive that their specific traits are much more unique to humans and much more essential. And as such, the more human the AI could get, we can already perceive that the more protective humans are gonna be of what makes them human. That's very interesting. So there's always gonna be that natural resistance. They propose that some human attributes are shared with AI. For example, computation, the rulemaking, the forecasting of the future, using logic, communication, all those things we thought as human 
now could be done by AI, whereas others are seen as unique to humans, which are distinct. Perception of culture and what culture means, holding beliefs, sense of humor, things of that nature, which are still sort of are synthesized by different tools, are not something we want to give up yet. My initial take from knowing these two studies is that it's almost unwise right now to just put out this quote-unquote AI slope, which is a term which is passed around the developer communities and forums here and there, which basically summarizes all that experimental nature and no use cases. And we know now that people are not dummies and they pick it up and they get fatigued of all these different successful or not successful cases and the push for the brilliance of AI also fatigues people too. And I'm no AI doomer again. I'm excited about these things, but we also have to be realistic of the true value it contains and how we need to position it. I think immediately people should take away that it's not always wise to label your products as AI powered. Maybe it's a small text. Maybe you need to think of what words to use to actually position these features. Because ultimately people don't really care what technology is behind the scenes. They don't care if it's LLM, LAM. They don't care if it's GPT. They don't care if it's AI ultimately. They care about what it delivers them in value. How does that fulfill their tasks day to day? Because AI and every other emerging tech we had, like Web3, Crypto, VR, AR, Mixed Reality Experiences, which is already everywhere, basically. Novel enough to spark hype. And as you know from Gartner's hype cycle of AI or any other technology, that hype always goes down as a wave. And there's obviously this reckoning of good use cases. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. As per usual, leave a comment. And on that note, I'll see you next time.